So, suffering from this addiction, that addiction, how do I get out of it? How do I get out of addictions? Mm -hmm. It's the age of addictions. <laughs> so addictions are very powerful because they have the power to destroy everything that we have. An addiction in one area of life has the power to destroy all other areas of life, including that area also. So it's like you do a mistake once, you do it again, 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 again. And not only that area is spoiled, but every other area of life, it is destroyed because addiction destroys the fundamental outlook towards life. Now, what is the fundamental outlook towards life? Now, that can be anything depending on different people, but what should be the fundamental outlook of life? Fundamental outlook of life should be based on, you know, the principles of the scriptures, like, for example, doing your best and leaving the rest to God, then not being too much detached, uh, not being too much attached with cer certain things or certain people, to be reasonably attached, not too much, but also to be reasonably detached and also not to be too detached, right? And also doing things in regulation. This, this is also one of the very important uh, principles of the Bhagavad Gita as Lord Krishna says, right? Yuktahara Viharasya. That famous shloka is there, right? If somebody knows the complete shloka, then please write it down in the comments along with what does that shloka mean, right? I will be very happy to see that. Let me see who can do this. The first comment. <laughs> <clears throat> So, Lord Krishna describes, you know, the qualities uh, of a yogi, basically, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, where he says, you know, yogi is one who does not eat too much or does not eat too less. Now, what does addictions violate? An addiction violates the basic, one of the basic principles of uh, happiness, one of the most important requirements for having a happy life, as per the scriptures. What is that? That is austerity, tapasya. So when you get addicted to something, you are violating the uh, principle of austerity all the time, which means you are giving in to quick pleasures. And austerity is basically voluntarily accepting certain inconveniences for a better future. So temporary unhappiness long-term happiness that's what is tapasya that's what is austerity on the other hand addiction is like temporary pleasure long-term misery right quick happiness long-term misery so lord krishna also says in the gita these pleasures materialistic pleasures you know these enjoying pleasures are like Nectar in the beginning and poison in the end, but spiritual pleasures are like you know, poison in the beginning. Nobody likes them, right? Long speeches, <laughs> but it's like nectar in the end, right? So addictions are very powerful because they keep us hooked in such a way that we cannot see anything. It's like a mirror, it's uh, or rather like a glass, I would say spectacles whenever we are addicted to something we see everything through that lens everything if a man is addicted to money for example not that people don't like money everybody likes money money is sweeter than honey but if somebody is addicted to money then what happens anything the person sees or experiences the person sees through the lens of money, anything and everything. And that will lead to the person, uh, lead to him doing gambling and all, sort, all sorts of uh, things which are not right. And then what happens? Not only does the person not attain, you know, money, because eventually the person will gamble and, you know, 
do something by which he will lose the money, right? That's how the material world works. <clears throat> but because to get that money, he has, you know, cheated people. He has done so many wrong things. You will see that people are unhappy with him. His, you know, parents, his children, his spouse, his friends, relatives, colleagues, partners, everybody just goes away. So when you are addicted to one area of life, you will lose that and everything else. All people around it, right? Now similarly, somebody is uh, addicted to the opposite sex, you know, watching adult material, pornography, or any uh, sensuous material, you know, listening to sensuous podcasts, you know, sensual literature, it's all rampant all over, right? So what happens when the person does this? The person is addicted. Anytime the person sees any member of the opposite sex, that's what he dreams, right? And that is what, because then for him, every, every uh, lady for this person will become like, you know, object of uh, sense enjoyment it becomes like an object there is no there is no personalization and then there is all sorts of other complications and uh, problems which come up you know it's like you are addicted to pornography you are watching a lot of material always you lose the ability to have normal conversations you are very fearful inside. You are insecure. You you can't have a normal conversation. Have, have you seen with some people? You try and you you just can't for some reason. <laughs> they are too pessimistic or too too numb to understand certain things. And Lord Krishna also says, right? Bhogeshwarya pasakta nam taya aparita chetasam like. When one indulges too much in sense enjoyment, then what happens is our ability to do spiritual practices like aparita chetasa means our chetana. Chetana is in a loose uh, connotation. You can understand chetana means you know our ability to make good choices in life that is dismantled. And what happens then is we make poor choices, right? And then we end up facing severe consequences for that area of life and as I am saying repeatedly again for other areas of life also. Very, very, very important. Right? Like smoking, uh, drinking, all this. Now the question is, how do you get rid of addictions? Very important. If, if we have some addiction, then we have to undergo serious penance in our life. Only then we can get rid of addictions. Otherwise, it's just not possible. It's just, just, just not possible. Because the ropes of the gunas, right? The modes of material nature, as Krishna says, you know, they are like different ropes. So these ropes are bound within our consciousness. And what happens is we are so much into them that we don't even realize and we are not there from this life, from millions of lifetimes. The first thing that we need to do when we realize or rather before that, the first thing is you have to accept the fact that you have an addiction. Even before you look for any help or you even plan to do something to get rid of that addiction, you have to humbly fold your hand and go to God and say, Oh God, I have this addiction. It's terrible. It's ruining my life. It's ending everything that I have. Please help me to get out of it. And I wholeheartedly take responsibility that I have this addiction. Because most of the times when you talk to people, they don't accept. Like when somebody comes to me for a consultation sometimes, I see their chart and I see they are addicted to alcohol. And then I tell them, sir, how's your addiction? <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no,
<laughs> it's not an addiction. Sorry, you are maybe they don't tell it to me in their face, but maybe they want to tell me, oh, why are they exaggerating things, right? <laughs> <clears throat> It's not an addiction. I have a cup, you know, one, I have a glass once every Friday or sometimes <laughs> once in a weekday also. And apart from uh, the weekends, like Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, you know, Fridays also on weekend for this category. But we are not an addict. Happens, but it's we, we are not an addict to it. It doesn't it doesn't mean that we are an addict. Kabi kabar karte, we do it sometimes. We do it out of pleasure. We do it moj karte kabi. <laughs> but it doesn't mean we are an addict. Right? Now, fine. You do it once Friday or Saturday or Sunday, or, or let's assume you drink twice a week. Fine, you are not an addict. I agree. But the problem is you drink two times a week when everything is normal. What if there is some birthday party or you know somebody is getting married or something like that? Then you may drink four times, right? Or worst case, worst case scenario, if something goes wrong in your life, you are sad, you are unhappy, you are miserable, you are delusional, then maybe... It's every day, right? Or maybe thrice in a day. <laughs> or at least three to four times a week. I know people who drink three to four times a week. I, I, I know such people. <clears throat> so the first step is sincere, humble acceptance of the fact. Because certain habits which we have, we may not qualify as being addicts, but in no time, sooner or later, in no time, they can lead to addictions and severe and serious addictions, very severe addictions. So, if you have addictions, but you feel you are not an addict, then to some extent, to be sarcastic, you may be lucky, right? You are actually not an addict, <laughs> which means you might not be... <clears throat> doing it that often. So that should be a reason to protect yourself and safeguard yourself. Okay, I do twice a week. Maybe I should reduce it once a week. And that should not be a reason to say, oh, I do it twice a week. You know, I don't do it seven days a week. So if it's three times a week, it's fine. No, that should be a reason to backtrack because for you, it's relatively easier to backtrack because you are not yet an addict. I mean, as you claim, right? <laughs> now, the question is, you have accepted that you are into addictions. And you might have more than one addiction also. But the question is, now what is the next thing that you do? Step number two, very, 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 very important. This is gold. Cut your association with those people because of whom you got these habits. You are addicted to smoking? Fine. No problem. Who did you start smoking with? Or who did you continue these habits? Oh, maybe your friend, your roommate, your best friend, right? Or your cousin, or maybe you was kiss your spouse. <laughs> Yes. So you have to discard them. Now discarding them doesn't mean you cut them completely from your life. But you have to limit your association with them. You have to do it. There is no other way you can. You have to do this. Because the moment you associate with them, the mind has all these memories and patterns. All of them will come back and it will drag you to the lower modes of nature again. So when that happens, you have no power. Because what we forget to understand is that our willpower may be more or less 
it can be increased or decreased but always remember it's like a currency it's not unlimited how much ever you have willpower from here you go to there you go to this much right but it is still limited you you are not none of us here at least myself i am not no, none of us here are, you know, perfected yogis or paramahamsas who can just say no to temptation just like this. No, none of them, none of us are at that standard, right? So, do not trust your willpower. Do not agree to what they say, right? The more you stay with them, the more you are likely to continue your addictions, right? This is step two. And step three is the most important thing, which is to identify why, why in the first place you had an addiction. Why? <clears throat> because there was some serious unhappiness in your life and you decided to forget it basically what does an addiction which makes you forget about the problems of life right so what is that which you are trying to forget so you have to work on that area of life so for example you know i meet some people sometimes you know who say oh they are very insecure about their you know, looks and their appearance or whatever because of Whatever reason, you know, some people commented or, you know, they've gone into smoking and all this. <clears throat> so, then you have to work on your, you know, appearance. You, you have to eat right, you have to exercise right, you know, have a good physique. Because if you feel your physique is not as per your expectation or you are not in, your, in the best shape of your life, then, and if you feel very offended when people comment on that, then just by getting into some addictions, you, you are not going to solve it. It's uh, it's only going to get worse, right? It It's not going to reduce. It's getting worse every day by day. So when you understand this, then now you are in a position to actually rectify it. So go step by step. If you have addictions from last 10, 20 years in one area of life, do not expect that tomorrow morning you'll be free from addictions. No. Maintain a journal when, so suppose you are having addictions of, you know, drinking, for example, alcohol. And it depends on the frequency. So if you're doing three times, you know, once in a weekday and twice in, in the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <clears throat> then you have to limit it to once per weekend. Then gradually you remove the weekday. Then gradually you remove the weekend. And then once in a month, if you want, if you like, there's some very special event you know, and you are unable to control, you take that's fine. But you have to understand that you have to reduce the frequency. And lastly, Addictions cannot be overcome if you just work on that aspect. Addictions will only be overcome when you create a fulfilling life where all areas of life are reasonably well balanced and there is a purpose that you have in your life towards which you are working. Right? Only when you do that, only then after a period of time, after a year or two or maybe even three, four years, but at least after two, three years, <clears throat> you will realize that, yes, now I am free from addictions. And what's number five? The most important thing is to join a spiritual community because the more you associate with the divine vibration, the word of the sadhus, the word of Lord Krishna, or whichever religion that you identify with, the more you will understand that there is much beyond in life than all this, all the materialistic pleasures. <clears throat> it's fine to do 
enjoyment in regulation. As per the scriptural uh, injunctions, for example, <clears throat> sex life, a person wants to indulge in sex life, then there is a recommendation that you get married and you indulge in physical intercourse with your wife for having children. You are not permitted to have premarital intercourse because the relationship is not bounded and there is no purification in front of fire, right? Through the vows of marriage. Along with that, we also have to understand that there are certain things which can be done in limitation, but certain things have to be given up altogether. So, for example, sexual indulgence, best if it is given up altogether, but if not possible, then at least we limit it with one person uh, that to after marriage. So that is permitted by the scriptures, but but certain things like, you know, uh, alcohol, for example, they should be given up completely. There is no, there's no verse which says, you know, oh, once in a week is fine, right? <laughs> so you have to understand where you belong. And what are your strengths and weaknesses? Some of us, we will be very happy. <clears throat> it will be very easy for us to control certain things, which is like a nightmare for others. And we will fail miserably in certain things, which are like, which is like a cakewalk for somebody, right? <clears throat> so you can talk to people who have conquered their weaknesses, you know. <clears throat> In certain areas, you can read certain sections from the Shimal Bhagavatam where you can find, you know, characters who were afflicted by certain uh, problems, you know, like lust, for example, and then how they got away with, got, got rid of it, right, finally. <clears throat> so when you read the Bhagavad Gita, Shimal Bhagavatam, you associate with the spiritual community, you take the bhoga that is offered to God, which we accept in the form of prasad, then there is purification. When we chant the name of God, we visit holy places, we get enlightened from spiritual personalities and have good relationships with people. Then, gradually, over two, three years, we understand there is the addiction. All right? So, take these five steps. So, and then I hope we will be able to be in a better situation in the next six months or maybe a year or so. Okay. Or at least after three years. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you will find my website also down in the description section. God is there with you always, irrespective of who you are and what addictions you have. Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you.